filmed at Children's Museum Houston in front of a live studio audience. Welcome to... I was told this was Star Wars Phantom Menace, the opera! I am your host, Jacob. Welcome to Mind Your Matter, the only game show that matters. Now, let's meet our contestants. In second place with six and a half points is contestant number one, Anna Williams, a fifth grade science student from Mendeleev Elementary. I'm ready, Jacob. In first place with seven points is contestant number two, Mikey Gomez, a sixth grade student from Rosalind Franklin Middle School. Let's do this. In last place with zero points is contestant number three, Philistine, whose failed experiment last time destroyed thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Science! Sure, okay then. Let's spin the wheel of science! Today's scientific challenge is... Sink or float, contestants. You will each be given two materials that have been here the whole time. Your task is to accurately predict which of those materials will float on water and which ones will sink to the bottom and justify your answers. Anna, we will start with you. A ping pong ball and a golf ball. How about you, Mikey? A large block of wood and a small metal cube. And now to Phyllis. It's Phyllis's time to shine. Yes, thank you, I guess. Listen, let's just keep this simple this time. Um, here is a quarter. Can you just tell me if this quarter will sink or float in the water? We'll be right back to see how our contestants do after this message. Welcome to Wacky Smatter's Sink and Float Emporium. We sell only the finest of objects that sink or float. We carefully measure the density, how much matters in the given amount of space, of each of our objects. That's right, everything you see has had its mass divided by volume. That way we could guarantee anything labeled less dense than water will float, and anything labeled more dense than water will sink. So come on down to Wacky Smatter's Sink and Float Emporium, where the only thing we're not dense about are our prices. Welcome back. A quick reminder before we learn our contestants' predictions is that while we encourage you to do scientific experiments at home, you should always have a responsible adult, not Phyllis, help keep you safe. It isn't always my fault. Yes, yes it is. Anna, we'll start with you. Your objects again are a golf ball and a ping pong ball. I've got this. It's all about density. Density refers to how much mass there is in a unit of volume. Basically, how much matter is in a given space. So if two items have the same volume, they take up the same amount of space. The item with more mass, where the matter is more tightly packed together, has greater density. And one way you can determine whether something has more mass is to measure its mass. As you can see, these two balls have similar volumes, but the golf ball has more mass, so its density is greater than the ping pong balls. Now to figure out whether these objects will sink or float, we need to predict whether each item is more dense or less dense than water. I know the ping pong ball is filled with air, so I predict it will float, and golf courses have water hazards, so I'm pretty sure the golf ball will sink. See? The golf ball is denser than the water, and so it sinks. The ping pong ball is less dense than the water, so it floats. Excellent prediction, Anna. That is three points for you this round, bringing you to a total of nine and a half points. On to you, Mikey. Mikey, make your predictions about that block of wood and that metal cube. This is tricky. The wood has both a greater mass and volume than the metal. So I need to compare them to the density of the water, not each other. Fortunately, they both have each of their volumes written on them going to have a word with our props master. Sorry. So if I compare the mass of the object against the mass of that same volume of water, we'll know which one has a greater mass. And because I have the same volume, we'll know whether the object or the water has a greater density. If I place the block of wood, which has a volume of 250 milliliters, and pour that same volume of water on the other pan, we see the water has a greater mass. That means because the volume is the same, the density of the water is greater, so the wood should float. But 
when I place the block of metal which has a volume of 20 milliliters and pour the same volume of water on the other pan, the metal has a greater mass. This means, because the volume is the same, the density of the metal is greater and it should sink. And now to test. As you can see, an object's density relative to the liquid it's in determines whether the object will sink or float, not its size. Excellent explanation. Three points for you, Mikey, keeping you in the lead with 10 points. <sighs> I guess we have to. Now on to you, Phyllis. Phyllis, you have a quarter. Just, just tell us if it'll sink or float. This is easy. It will float. Um, are you sure? Of course. Watch as I demonstrate. Uh, Phyllis, it, it definitely sank. The, the quarter is more dense than the water. Right now it sank because the molecules of the quarter are packed very tightly together. However, if I use my newest invention, the Matter Spreader 350... Please don't. ...and aim it at the molecules of the quarter, it will spread them apart, thus making it less dense than the surrounding liquid and causing it to float. Observe! Wow, that's amazing! It appears your invention actually worked this time! Well, of course! Wait a minute. I feel odd. Well, technically it is floating, right? Phyllis, you're not supposed to make everything float. Get us down. Well, I haven't built a Matter Compactor 351 yet. Folks, I'm sorry to say that Phyllis Stein has once again ignored the scientific process and left us floating in midair, all for a grand total of zero points. That means that Mikey maintains his lead of 10 points, with Anna close behind at nine and a half points. And we'll see you next time, hopefully, on... Mind Your Matter! Is it just me, or was Jar Jar Binks a little off-key? You heard it? Uh -uh.